why this particular place? Obviously, there's something uh, individual and singular yeah. to this place um, that would make you kind of invest into this community. Yeah. Uh, I guess for that question, I want to know, talk a little bit about yourself, um, where you came from, who you are, and why you feel the need to galvanize these areas to be their best, to be the best versions of themselves. This broader neighborhood, you know, meant something to me because until I was 10 years old, you know, I lived, I spent my life variously within 10 blocks of here. So, you know, one of my grandmothers lived on 51st in Vermont, and that's Vermont Square. Um, my other grandmother lived on 67th Street, um, so literally five minutes from here. So I spent my childhood here until age 10. Mm. Um, and all my family, you know, when I moved away to Texas, they remained here. Yeah. So when I came back to LA in 2016, after being away forever, to the extent that I wanted to do something that would impact someone who's a younger version of me now, mm. it makes sense to go back. The very powerful. So you saw yourself as being someone that could have utilized a place like this. I'm a big believer in, you know, in the nature versus nurture debate about how people evolve and what they become. You know, I think nurture and what you're exposed to and the environment you're in means a lot, mm -hmm. right? So it took, you know, an, a really stark transition for me to move from South Central Los Angeles to a really small town in Texas mm -hmm. where, you know, some of the issues around poverty and money were the same for me, but just the chaos of being in, you know, a large inner city um, in the 80s, it wasn't there. Mm -hmm. And so that, that forced kind of calm that I went into, mm -hmm. it let me, you know, it let me learn things about myself. Mm -hmm. And what made this realization that a lot of it is um, what you're exposed to and the inputs you have is because I had a brother who, you know, I looked up to and he was the smartest person I knew um, he remained in LA and we just had such divergent paths mm -hmm. from that point on in life. And then all of my younger siblings were born here, either here, um, in South Central or in Inglewood. And again, very divergent paths when we have the same genetics, we have the same bloodline. Um, and when I talk to them and interact with them, you know, smart, charismatic, funny, I just had a different, um, a different opportunity set. Yeah. You know, and we're all aware yeah. that there, there are inequalities in income, wealth, and opportunity, and it really starts with what's around you, right? So just what's around here where, where I first grew up and then where my family continued to live just hadn't changed as much as I would have thought, given that I was gone for 20, you know, for more than 20 years. And that was depressing. But then apart from like the physical the, the aesthetic of the communities or the physical layout of the communities or, you know, what grocery stores or gyms or, or coffee shops, um, the mindset and the culture in the communities, like gangbanging was the thing, was a big part of the chaos when I was here, right? And a big part of kind of what let me thrive when I went to this small town, there wasn't anything like that, you know? Yeah. Um, there was other shit that goes along with poverty and nothingness, but there were no gangs. So, you know, being in, in New York on Wall Street in between schools for 20 years, you don't really think about that stuff. Coming back to see it's such a prevalent part of life for young kids in a neighborhood like this and teenagers and, and guy, you know, men and women in their early 20s, that was disheartening. 18 to 24 year olds in any of the neighborhoods I keep referencing outside of this community, they're thinking about a startup and changing the world and, and they're whether they're going to college or not, yeah. it's a whole different mindset. You go to, you walk around Inglewood, in the black neighborhood, the Crenshaw district, Watts, gangs and the specter of death or violence is, is a way of, is, is a part of the everyday fabric of life. My dad used to say that. My dad used to say, my dad used to say, just remember my first job is to keep you alive. Yeah. Think, about, think about hearing that from your father, yeah. knowing that it's true and understanding the way that changes the choice matrix that you have. Yeah, for me, I knew there were kids here who, if given the right inputs and the right tools, um, if I could contribute to some of those inputs and tools, it could be meaningful.